everybody, welcome back. I'm Mark Pence Taylor. This is Countdown to First Flight, episode two. Now, like all of you, I've been cooped up at home. So the good news is I got a lot done on the Zenith Cruiser behind me. The bad news is I haven't even been able to get a haircut. Actually, you know what? You might be able to fix that. Hold on one second. <laughs> all right, well. Hey, that took care of that. This is much better now. The cruiser you see behind me is 100% done and ready to fly. Now I say 100% done, but I do have to paint the wheel pants and the cowling it. But other than that, the airplane literally could go fly right now if it was inspected and signed off by the FAA. That is going to be the holdup on the first flight because I have no idea when the FAA will be open and when they will be able to come out and give the airplane its airworthiness certificate. But I have weighed the airplane, I've done the fuel flow test, and I've done some other little details on the airplane that I'm going to take you through right now. These are the AN 970 washers I'm using for the wheel pants. They are gold, and of course I want them to look chromed and silver. So I'm using my trusty flits to polish them up. This is what they look like after they are polished. Here it is with the screw, and here's all four of them done, and here's what they look like on the wheel pants. Of course, the wheel pants will be painted blue later. Now, in episode one of Countdown to First Flight, I showed you how I attached this aluminum uh, tube to the, the landing gear. This is just a tube that the brake line goes through. I showed you this tape that I use. It's just 3M double-sided tape that I got at Walmart, and it doesn't work. These came off pretty easily with this tape and I wound up peeling this tape off and I bought this 3M VHB tape which is uh, a lot more stickier and it works a lot better to hold these on. This is pretty solid and it's not going to come off. Now since I had these off I thought I'd bust out the old flits and give them one more polish before I put them back on the airplane. So now my nice shiny tubes here are installed on the gear and it looks great. I also bought about 18 million feet of this spiral wrap and I put it on the brake line just because the brake line is kind of touching the bottom of the fuselage and the aluminum angle on the bottom of the airplane. Alright, so before I talk about the fuel flow test and weighing the airplane and all that, there's two books from the EA that I want to recommend to you. Uh, the first one is a step-by-step -step certification guide. If you're getting ready to have your airplane inspected and do the test flights and all that, this is just a guide on how to fill out all of the required paperwork to get your registration done. It also comes with all the required paperwork. So every form you're going to need to send into the FAA is included in this. And then this is a nice instruction book on how to fill out that paperwork. Now, all the paperwork is online. You can download all the forms you need, but it is nice to have just to buy a $20 book that includes all the paperwork. It also has this placard sheet if it's handy for you, and it does come with a, uh, a data plate that you can have engraved and put on the back of your airplane. So for like $20, it's a great deal and it's, it's pretty helpful. The other thing I wanted to recommend is the flight test manual. It comes with these two books here and it has this big book here is just kind of a, a basic guide on your first flight and getting the airplane ready for your your flight test program but this little book here is really neat you can see it's spiral bound it's small it's made to take with you in the airplane and each page has a different basically a different flight so the first first page in here is a fuel flow test you can record your results with that then it has the first taxi first flight um, just everything that you need. You can record all your temperatures and speeds and things like that. So it's a really handy booklet to have and it really guides you through the first 40 hours of your test phase so you're not up there just flying circles for 40 hours. This really uh, is a useful thing and again I think this is like 15 or 20 dollars from the EAA so it might be something you want to pick up. For my fuel flow test, I put some bricks under the nose wheel and I lowered the tail just about as low as I could. 
And what I did was I disconnected a fuel line, and you can see it going down into the five gallon gas can. Now, the uh, guide does recommend you ground it, so that's what that green wire is. I just grounded the fuel can. But what I did was once the fuel hose was in the five gallon gas can, I turned a fuel selector valve on and I let the fuel drain until I was at the five gallon mark. That took 21 minutes and 21 seconds. So that gives me, uh, just with gravity feed, about 15 gallons per hour, which is absolutely plenty for this UL power engine. All right, now on to weighing the airplane. After I drain the fuel, whatever fuel is left in the wing tanks, I'll consider that my unusable fuel. Now I weighed the airplane three different times. The first two times, you can see us struggling to do it like this where we pulled it onto the scales. And that's kind of hard to do because it's kind of like pulling your airplane up over the chocks. But we weighed it twice this way and both times it was within a half a pound. We got 841 pounds. But I wanted to weigh it again because the Zenith manual actually recommends that you place the airplane down on top of the scales so the landing gear isn't compressed. They said it could change the readings. So I did it a third time with my buddy Brian and when we weighed it again it actually came out exactly the same. It was 841 pounds again. So the total weight of the airplane, 841 pounds. Oh. That's Brian. Brian, tell me, tell them what you named my cruiser. Cruisers are for losers. <laughs> He's a glass air pilot, so I only let him over here when I need help with something. All right, everybody, that is the update for the Zenith Cruiser. Now, my next steps that I'm going to start working on now is to get the wheel pants prepped for paint. You can see there's a seam down the middle that I need to sand and fill. The nose wheel still needs some, some sanding and filling. And I need to prep the cowling also for paint. So I'm going to try to get that done. It may even be done before the first flight, which would be kind of nice. That way on the first flight video, the airplane will actually look good with everything painted. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the, uh, the channel. Give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. It really does help the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and then we'll see you again on the next video.